Um, one thing, uh, if you were really listening closely when uh, Reinhardt's example was up and he raised his shield, and it was when it broke, you'll notice there was a volume diff. This is actually, those videos are very old. There's a, they're almost right. a year and a half old at this point. So there's even old Faravio and stuff like that in there that's been updated since. But you'll notice that volume dip. And I'll come back to that example and explain what that was in a little bit. Um, uh, so a clear mix. Uh, this is obviously uh, a goal of, of any game. Uh, we want to make sure you hear uh, you know, what you need to hear at any given time. Um, there's a classic article from Walter Murch, uh, Dense Clarity, Clear Density, where he talks about the human capacity to be able to process sound and how much you can handle at one time that actually makes sense. And it goes on this, uh, this range from you know, more emotional sounds that are almost more musical, like you know, music is a much more emotional thing and you can handle mul you know, one thing from that or something like a whale song might be also more on the emotional side where something like voice is a very encoded sound, means there's a lot of information. So if you get more than one thing going on encoded at one time, you can't really process it. Um, and there's even sound effects that fall on the encoded side, like a, a telephone ring or something like that, that kind of means something. Um, so you want to try and basically, in his uh, explanation, you want to try and uh, be able to minimize the amount of things across the spectrum that are conflicting. And um, his examples that he give are, uh, are just complete removal of certain aspects of the mix so that you have more clarity and you can and it guides the attention of the player. So this was a, an original um, inspiration many years ago when some of the ideas for this were forming. And um, we were looking for ways to clear this mix up. So we tried HDR. Um, so those of you who aren't familiar with it, HDR takes um, uh, something that's m louder in a mix and will carve out space for it. So on the left, the, uh, the background ambience here, let's say you have a nice steady background ambience and then a loud sound comes along the background will actually carve out almost in the shape of this to make room so that this sound is a little more clear and they're not conflicting with each other. Um, we tried that and um, you'll note that example I gave in the shield break was HDR. That was the, what ended up happening there was uh, one of the sound designers was trying to get that, that shield break sound effect to cut and it kept raising in volume because it just wasn't cutting in the mix and it finally got out of control and caused this massive duck of voice and all these other things that we didn't intend. So um, I in addition to that, uh, what happened was uh, Martin from Audio Kinetic came to visit right around the time that we were working on this stuff. And he uh, was talking to us about, and we were talking about our problems with um, some of the mix and some of the issues that we were thinking about. And he said something that was really interesting. He said, uh, HDR is basically just a ducking system that works on the only information it has, which is volume. That's the only information that you can know at that point. It has no game knowledge, it has nothing. So we thought, well, maybe there's better questions to ask. Um, rather than just what is the loudest and duck other things out of the way, what is your greatest threat? That's the fundamental uh, question we were trying to get at. And all these other things here are kind of sub-questions to that. Um, in this screenshot, you know, I'll, I'll give a few examples as well. You know, you're curious maybe who I'm looking at. I'm looking at him. Uh, well, who's looking at me? Maybe this Pharaoh is looking at me and launching a rocket straight at me. That actually might be more important than, than looking at him. Who's close by? He may be closer. But who's shooting their weapon at me? That is probably more important. Who's actually damaging me? Those type of, thing, uh, those type of things. Um, who's using a big dangerous ability? All these things are uh, questions that the game could potentially answer. Um, but why is at that stage wouldn't know anything about? So we took those same questions and put it into a system. Yeah, so actually after uh, Martin visited, we, we, we called a meeting and we said, hold on, we got something here. Like we need to understand what state the game is, how does the player relate to the threats around it, and then we maybe drive the loudnesses for uh, certain buses and mixes. So we sat down and we asked these questions and I give you some examples here. There's one. Um, enemy size on my screen, and it has a weight, it has like 10% weight, whatever that means, and it holds the value for a certain time and then just dies out. But then there is this my size on enemy screen. So if there is a sniper and he has to scope up, you are pretty big on their screen, and in that moment the importance uh, peaks. And, uh, but the, the, the biggest driver is shot add, has a 60% value here. And it, it holds that for quite a while. So even if 
after two seconds, you still have that peak and then it slowly dies out. So to explain that system really quick, let's say you are the player in the blue, you're looking up there, and there is an enemy uh, looking away from you, we would just grant you some important points, right? Whatever that means, 40, 40 important points. And then there's another hero or an enemy up there, further away, not looking at you. Obviously, he's less important than this other person. Now, this guy is shooting at you. Um, he's looking, he's, he's further away than this guy, but he gets the majority of the threat uh, points that we, that we contribute. And then we can just add more heroes. Those are super low now because they're not looking at you. Um, they are looking at you, but they're not shooting or damaging you, so they're still pretty high. So then we had all these values, and we said, well, what, what's next? Obviously, we wanted to sort them down, and we um, integrate, we, we call them pets, but the turrets, the turbine turret, um, or other turrets are enemies as well, and they might be damaging you, they might be looking at, at you. So we have this list, and, and a bunch of these are still really high and important, and we thought it really doesn't make sense that if you have you always fight against six other enemies and you have five friendlies. And we really wanted to ignore the friendlies for a while, but let's say you have six people all shooting at you, that's still a mess, audio-wise. And we said, how can we separate that? And at some point we need to be um, just doing, following the math there. And we said, we sorted in buckets. Um, and these buckets have slots. So the, the highest bucket only allows for a single enemy to go in. And then we have a um, a medium bucket which allows two, um, and they, if they're filled up, they're filled up, and everyone else needs to go into a different bucket. Um, so instead of giving this these values here to Wise as an RTPC or or however we would drive it, we actually put the index uh, into Wise, which would be zero, one, two, three, and that's what uh, what Scott is showing you guys now. Um, so this this. Uh Slide shows these different buckets in a, in a different way. There's there's one like he said in high, a couple in normal, uh, a lot in low because we in, we put all of our friendlies into this bucket as well. And then everything that goes beyond that limit will fall into what we call our coal bucket, which isn't a true coal bucket, but um, it essentially is, which I'll show you within wise. Um, the order and layout of the slides kind of important. Um, you'll notice that the high the most important is on the left. That'll make sense in a second. Um, and another thing to kind of keep in mind is, you know, look how little there is on this side. There's only three guys. In this side, there could be 15. You know, so we're very much limiting the, the important sounds down to as little as we can. Um, and then everything else is going to just lose priority. And I'll show you how that happens. Um, so again, with the order, this is high, medium, low, and call. And we then use, uh, utilize these values out the top level of a wise actor mixer. So those shared um, uh, properties that I was talking about when I gave the layout are all defined, um, in this case, on third person weapon fire. And this is, we're looking at a makeup gain. So this is gonna be a plus seven dB for the most important um, gun. Uh, the next two players are gonna be plus maybe three or whatever that is. All the ones that fall into the rest of the bucket will be at, at unity at zero. And then finally, if they fall into the coal bucket, they'll be minus seven, eight, whatever that is. F uh, we could do this on not just volume, a lot of different properties. Here we're doing priority, we're doing high pass filter, we're doing pitch, and I'll show you more of this actually in the project. But we just modulate all these different things based on what is important. Um, however, not all things are equal. Uh, ultimate abilities are important kind of no matter who you are or where you are. This has a much less intense curve. Um, it's just saying, you know, for the most part, it's sticking right into that same, you know, two, three dB window. It just drops a little bit um, until you're here. And very few people will ever get into this bucket. So I want to show you some of this within Wise. I think that's, yeah, that's what's next. Um, and just point out some of the uh, ways we did this. So I'll look at that weapon fire. So we go in here. And you'll see that the 3P weapon fire, if we go to RTPCs, there's a ton of stuff that we're doing. Um, but these are the importance. The priority, for example, of weapon fire is pretty extreme. On the top level, um, when you're the most important person, you have a 95 priority. But if you even fall into that next bucket, it's maybe a little more okay if that sound would cut out. So that's got a priority of 60. Uh, your friendly is dropped down to a priority of 40. And when you hit the coal bucket, you have a priority of zero. You probably will never hear the sound. 
Um, so we do that for all these different things. Uh, high pass filter, very, you know, the, the you get a full frequency sound for the most important. And then we roll off just a tiny bit, you know, we, this is only five, I think it goes a little bit more later. And then finally when you get down here, it's going a little bit higher. We could probably hit that a bit harder. Um, we even do a little pitch based on priority. So as uh, the first two are set to zero, when you get to the friendly bucket, we actually pitch down the weapon fire just a little bit to get it into a slightly different space. Um, that's also key because we put all of our friendlies there. So when you hear your friendly weapon fire, there's just a little bit lower pitch, a little lower in volume. So you kind of subconsciously can separate that from an enemy. Um, and I'll show you some uh, video examples now that will help. Do you uh, want to talk like about the story with the footsteps and why the footsteps were such a design yeah. Yeah, yeah. drive? Yeah, so th the footsteps are huge. Actually, I'll show you an example of that too. So if we go to the 3P, I mean, that was pretty much why we not used HDR. Yeah. Because we got the feedback from the, from the design team that said, I think I got killed by someone standing behind me, just walking up and, and shooting me in the back. And, and you know, you, you take it from there. Yeah, it just became extremely important. Um, we were constantly past, uh, we use shadow play a lot in the office. So when people are playing and something happens, they, they feel like it was an unfair moment for them. They would send us this video and we'd look at it, we'd analyze it and we'd be like, oh yeah, it's probably because this guy was here and this. We'd sort of recreate the scenario and try and uh, adjust our values to, to make it um, so that they had a chance to react in that situation. So if you look at the footsteps, these are the probably the most extreme use of this importance value. Um, first of all, the, the high has got a 99 priority. You're not going to lose those footsteps. Um, the next one, even in the next bucket, is still at a 90. Friendlies drop significantly to 40. But then look at the... Uh, the so they're, they're more important than weapon fire at that Yeah, point. so they're more important than weapon fire. They also, look at ex extreme volumes here. This is plus 12 on the most important footsteps. We want it to be extremely loud, cut through the max, make sure you hear it. Even the next one's still plus 9, and then a huge drop to minus 4. There's a giant range between these things. And you'll hear this in a uh, video example I have for you. So, um, the other one. Which just I'll tap back to the uh, sky. Yeah. Cool. So is it, um, this example shows, uh, I think first, oh okay, this is an example where, I'm gonna talk over it a little bit. Um, this Widowmaker over here, pay attention mostly to her. So these guys are shooting each other, and they're taking up all the influence. You can barely hear her fire. What's gonna happen is eventually she's gonna turn around, and she's gonna pull her scope out, and all of a sudden she's cutting through the mix to hear her above anything else. Another example, listen for the footsteps. Oh, Clearly no. someone's on their way, and you had a chance to react. That's an example of that all sort of working in full speed. Now I could show you a slow-mo version of this where we could sort of see the numbers uh, tuning and moving around a bit. Um, I'm going to try and skip forward a bit because it takes forever, but um, these values here, they're very hard to read, but the ones in red are the importance, and those are the two guys on the bottom, and they're just kind of fighting over the importance um, slot at the moment while they're shooting. And then this Widowmaker is here on the third slot, much lower score than the rest. Now if I fast forward just a little bit, until she's going to she's up here, she's going to turn around, you'll see her color change. As soon as she turns around and pulls her scope out, She's going to jump immediately to the top of that list. So there she goes turning around and scopes out. She's now the most important person, and those shots are going to cut through the mix. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit further, and as you're back here, I detached the camera so you could see it. There's our uh, McCree character in the background who's just kind of waiting. It's kind of hard to see. He's a little blocked. You see by his color, he's also not the red, the high importance, until he makes that curve. He jumps in priority because he's about to sneak up on you. He cuts through the mix and you have a chance to react to him, of course, in this video. But, um, so that, that really helped us in um, dynamically changing our mix and making sure that whatever you needed to hear was constantly being shuffled and reevaluated at any given time. Um, so we use that same system to uh, drive the difference between friendly and enemy sounds. So um, these are all the exact same assets.
So all the same sounds uh, mixed in a completely different way, less low end, less volume, um, pitched a little bit differently so that they stand out in their own unique way. Uh, so that wraps up uh, kind of the major steps we took with the clear mix.